NBA draft cranks up tonight. Pelicans in the mix in the first round. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But I also want to hear about kind of where the organization stands and what they're looking to do in this offseason. It could be transformative if what the rumors are actually come to fruition. Christian Clark covers the Pels for NOLA News and the Advocate. You can follow him on Twitter at CClark underscore 13. Joins us now on the Tim's Fire on Hotline. Christian, thanks for the time. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing quite well. I'm curious to see what New Orleans does over the next uh, 24, 48 hours. Um, I want to start big picture before we nail down the next uh, 24, 48 hours. Like, um, what did you make of this past season for the Pelicans? They were healthy for so long until they weren't, and then they really weren't, and the postseason exit was really, really quick. What did you think of it at, in its entirety? Yeah, I mean, the 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 main two guys finally played. I mean, I think the story of the two seasons before this past one was just the availability issues that, that they dealt with with Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson. I mean, I think, you know, 49 wins was largely a product of health and availability. But at the same time, you know, those minutes when C.J. McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson were all on the floor together, the Pelicans, three $30 million players, Pelicans were just okay. They actually lost those minutes. I think the Pelicans, you know, won a lot of games because they had a, a really good bench and they had good depth. But, you know, this this is five years of Brady Ingram and Zion Williamson together. Guys have not played in a playoff game yet. Uh, you know, bad luck has a lot to do with that. But I think when you just look at that in its totality, I think that's why a lot of people around the NBA think, hey, look, the Pelicans are, are right for a shakeup. What do you think the Pelicans organization thinks of Zion Williamson at this point? I think they have a much higher opinion of him than they did like a year or two ago. I mean, last summer, I, I think they really looked at trading Zion once. And I think there was just extreme frustration with some of the stuff that had gone on, um, you know, in terms of him just not being diligent about rehab, the off the court stuff. I think they, they like him a lot more. It's, it's like uh, a partner than they did this time last year. And, you know, everything I've heard this summer is, Hey, look, we're going to make a go of this. And we know this roster right now, it's not like optimized to fit around Zion Williamson, take advantage of his strengths. So I think they're going to try to get the pieces around Zion a little bit better going into next season. Do those pieces include Brandon Ingram? Yeah, that's, that's the big one, right? That's the big question. And I think probably, I mean, I, I'm not ruling out the possibility that, that Brandon is back next season, you know, on a, on an extension, but I've reported early in this off season that I don't think the Pelicans are willing to offer him his full max extension. That's $208 million over four years, $52 million in every annual value. I don't see the Pelicans going there. I mean, maybe there's a middle ground where it's like, okay, 160 million over four years. But I think the most likely scenario is Brandon Ingram is, is on a different team next season. The Pelicans have Trey Murphy to plug in at the starting three spot if Brandon Ingram is on a different team. And I think when you look at the two areas of need for the Pelicans, a center, you know, it's on sure this is unrestricted free agent. And then I think playmaking. I mean, CJ McCollum has been a good player for this team, but he's best in an off ball role. I think, you know, this team needs a lead guard. Where do they find that? Are there any names you've got in mind? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I think the Pelicans had contact with the Cavaliers and the Hawks before the trade deadline in February. I think Darius Garland is is an obvious name. I think people are wondering why well, the Cavs are actually going to move them. They're acting like they're not right now. And then Atlanta is definitely a team I look at. They've got two lead guards. It seems like they're they're going to trade one of them this summer. Trey Young is, you know, a really talented offensive player. He makes pull-up threes. He's a really good lob thrower. You could put him in the pick-and-roll with Zion. And then DeJounte Murray is the other guy. DeJounte Murray is not as talented an offensive player as Trey Young. The, the fit between him and Zion is not as clean. But he's bigger. He's better defensively. And I think an underrated factor here is DeJounte Murray has a really good contract. The Pelicans, they're one of two teams in the NBA that never paid the luxury tax. They're just not going to shell out for a ton in payroll. And DeJounte Murray's on a, a pretty good contract. You know, Trey Young, I think, is making $43 million next year. It's a big number. DeJounte Murray's at like $26 million, something like that. Christian Clark's our guest, covers the Pelicans for uh, NOLA News and the Advocate Draft coming up tonight. You mentioned a big with Jonas Alan Kunis moving on as, uh, potentially as an unrestricted free agent. 
What traits are they looking for in their center if you're trying to fit pieces around Zion Williamson? Yeah, I mean, they, David Griffin has said on the record for more than a year, we want more rim protection. There has been this idea coming from the Pelicans that if they if they plug in more of a defensively oriented center, someone who can be that backline defender, then that would make all the pieces around them look better. So I think that's that's something they're going to look at. Like, you know, could, could they get in on Nick Claxton, who was with the Nets? Like, is there a route where they could get him with a sign-in trade? Jared Allen is a guy the Pelicans have loved for a long time. I mean, if if he's available, I would expect the Pelicans to make a really hard push. I also think there's an alternate pathway where they could get creative. Like the Houston Rockets, for example, had the number three pick. They could they could take Donovan Klingon conceivably. Could the Pelicans go in a different direction and get like make a push for like Alperin Shangu, guy who's like a borderline All Star, young center, kind of an offensive hub. So I, I do think there's that second door that's like a possibility. It might be remote, but I think the most likely outcome is just someone in that rim protector mold. Obviously, the Pelicans do have a, a first round selection uh, tonight in the draft at number 21. Uh, any idea what they're uh, looking for there? Yeah, I mean, you look at all the mock drafts. Um, you know, all the reputable people, reputable people are connecting the Pelicans to Eves Macy, uh, one and done kid from Baylor. Um, raised in Cameroon from a basketball family. His brother played to Harvard. His parents are on the Cameroonian national team. He's a really athletic center. You know, the way he's kind of been described to me, I think the Pelicans' interest in him is real. Is He's a little like Jackson Hayes in terms of he finishes lobs, he get blocked shots, but um, I don't know how to put this kindly, but uh, a little more serious about basketball, right? <laughs> I think that was the main problem with the Jackson Hayes thing. He's just uh, kind of unserious. He's 19 when the Pelicans drafted him. So that's, that's how... Steve Meese's interest has been described to me. You know, the idea of Jackson Hayes, but somebody with his head screwed on straight, basically. I think that Isaiah Collier is a potential option for the Pelicans at 21. He was a top-rated player in his high school class, went to USC, and had an okay year. He hurt his hand. There was a lot of stuff going on in USC in terms of coaching. Um, so I think that's a guy they'll give a look. And then i got a sleeper name for you, Baylor Shireman, a uh, five-year college player, started at South Dakota State, uh, no, started at yeah, started at Coast State, finished it at Creighton. Just a wing who can really shoot the ball and is kind of crafty. You know, there's questions about the athleticism, but a guy who can really shoot and is just a really smart player. So, those are my three guys I'm really keeping an eye on going into tonight. Well, there's one of those three guys or someone else. What's the um, realistic chance that the 21st pick in this draft is a key piece to New Orleans next season? Yeah, not not very high. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I mean, you just look at like go go look at the first round of last year's draft, and this is just true year after year after year. I mean, it's it's very rare for anybody to to get a guy and he is contributing to winning. Like I, I look at like Jordan Hawkins, I love some of the flashes I saw from Jordan Hawkins. I'm I'm still very high on Jordan Hawkins as a player, and he's some really nice moments. But like when you just look at all the advanced stuff for Jordan Hawkins, like the on off, it wasn't great. I know fans like the grumble of well, why is Willie Green playing Jose Alvarado over Jordan Hawkins? It's like, well, they, they often win the minutes with Jose Alvarado on the floor, and more often than not, they're losing the minutes with Jordan Hawkins, and that's no disrespect to them. It's just, it's just really hard when you're 19 or 20 years old to contribute to winning in the NBA. Sure is. Enjoy the draft tonight, Christian. We really appreciate the time. All right, man. Appreciate it. Christian Clark, Pelicans beat writer for NOLA.com and the advocate NOLA News. Uh, Pels picking 21st tonight. We'll see uh, if they decide to make that pick, move some things around. Brandon Ingram on the trading block. A lot of things that could happen over the next few days, and we'll, uh, we'll certainly keep you abreast of all of it here on the Hunt Palmer Show.